And now, on with the show. Um, today, I'm going to talk about one of my greatest passions, and that is women. Not the urban woman that you always hear about, but the rural woman. More often than we always think, when people talk about women, all they think about is her places in the kitchen. But for me, I think otherwise. I think women are pillars of peace. Women are strong forces that can build communities and bring communities together. Women are people that come together. I come from the northeastern part of Uganda, and we all know this is a community that has suffered lots of conflict. They have moved from the Uganda People Army's War to the spiritual wars of Alice Lakwena. If we all know the history of Uganda, I'm sure you can follow me on this. To the Lord's Resistance Army incursion and to the Karamojo Castle wrestling raids. And guess who are always the victims? Of course, it is the women and the children. But why don't they always be left in the decision-making processes? Their bodies are victimized. They are used as weapons of war. They are left without anyone to support them. Their spouses are taken as soldiers, and they are left to head households that they are presumed not to be ready to head. Unlike other people, I was lucky to have an education. Me and my siblings, of course we grew up hiding under beds and speaking in hushed voices. And definitely that's not a sexy life that I want for anyone in this society. Gunshots, bullets every other day, and you're always crumbling and wondering, will I see the next day unfold? It's something different. It's something very, very different until you're in those shoes. That is when you can really understand what I'm talking about. But of course, it was, a, it was different for me because I had an education. And throughout my education and my professional career life, I kept thinking, what is it I'm going to give back to the community that nurtured me, that made me the person I am today? I always wondered, what is the best thing? And that is why I took the discourse of conflict resolution. Why conflict resolution? To help women be able to come to decision-making processes, so that they may stand with their male counterparts. And what's interesting is that throughout this time, I had inspirations. We all know Honorable Betty Bigombe. If we all recall in 1994 the LRA talks between the government of Uganda and the Lord Resistance Army, this was the mastermind and the person that first brought these two warring parties together was Betty Bigombe. If Betty can do that, what about the rural woman back in, in the north and northeastern region of Uganda? She inspires me. Each time I talk about Betty, Honorable Betty Bigombe, I get more and more inspired. But today, I don't want to talk about Betty because I could probably talk about her the whole evening. Today, I want to talk about a rural woman that I met. Her name is Grace. Grace is someone whom I would like to call a fighter and a survivor indeed. Grace is a woman I met while I was working with Tesla Women Peace Activists, a rural women's organization that seeks to empower women within the rural areas of Tesla and Karamoja region. Grace was raped once, twice, and a couple of other times. Imagine it was you. <coughs> Imagine it was your grandmother. I'm not saying that men are not raped, but let's look at it. Let's picture this for Grace's sake. Imagine it was you. Imagine it was your daughter. Just imagine it was your own sweet little girl that was raped. What would become of her? Imagine the community stereotypes after getting raped. It's definitely a saddening story. The first time Grace told me her story, I almost broke down in tears. And to this day, I still imagine what it meant like to go through what she went through. Making matters worse for Grace, she was ostracized by her own family and her community because she was looked out as an outcast. Because she wasn't worthy to be in this community. And Grace thought that the only place to run to was an anthill. And that's where she hid. And it was at that time that I came in contact with Grace. <coughs> we empowered Grace. I empowered Grace. I taught her how about her human rights, not just as a person, but as a woman. She has rights like any other person here today. I taught her that you can always stand up 
and be another person and not sit back and wait for people to help you. But you can be the source of help and inspiration to other women. Today, Grace is a very, very proud woman. She has spoken in very many international conferences and she has spoken and she's willing to tell everyone her story. I suffered, but today I'm not going to sit down. I'm going to stand up and fight for women like myself. Grace, she has come back to Uganda and she has set up a, a community-based organization of her own. And this organization empowers women like me and you. Hearing stories like Grace and for many women that I have worked with, inspires me and makes me know I have made a very big contribution to this society. One interesting thing though, is that the women don't sit back. They are inspired and my inspiration comes from that. I'm so glad I started what I started to do at the time I did because women like this make me become more and more happy. Today, I am very proud. I am not just proud because I can be able to speak today, but because I am also an author of a book, Reparations for Women Victims of Sexual and Gender-Based Violence. And I'm very proud. <laughs> Apart from that, I have trained over a thousand women plus in conflict resolution, peace building, conflict transformation, and human rights. And today, I'm calling on to all of you. Please don't just sit there. Get up and do something for your community. I'm just beginning. What about you? Thank you.